Hey, you did it. You pushed the button. Welcome to John Bound Politics, numero 39. I usually don't cuss, but I have to on this episode. I apologize. Please cover the ears of those that may not want these words flying into their eardrums. It's not that bad. America, it's okay to be angry, and you should voice that anger at all costs and opportunities to the four winds. I awoke this morning after dreaming about the unrelenting chaos in our nation. A chaos born of half-truths, Marxist fantasies, anti-Americanism, and self-loathing by mainly two spoiled generations, Generation Z and the Millennial Generation, that was handed everything. You fools are embarrassing yourselves. One day you will look to my generation, Generation X, and you may want to take a note, we aren't boomers. One day... When you are thankful for everything you've worked for and only want a sane and happy existence for your children, you will apologize, at least to yourselves, for your treasonous tantrums, and we will solidly tell you to eat shit. A lot of you will be doing it from behind bars, because prison is the only reasonable place for you. You're a generation of assholes. Everything you are doing to the average American will end up coming back to you a hundredfold. Experiencing rape and true racism from the neo-Nazi and militant black factions, lying awake at night, wondering how it all went wrong, you can repeat these names. Legend Talaferro, Jessica Whitaker, David Dorn, Cannon Hinnant, Sicoria Turner, Tyler Girth, Jonathan Shoup, Nathan Garza, Veronica Lee Baker, members of our family, our American family, right here, right now, not 300 years ago, not 60 years ago, not 20 years ago, but right now, 2020. It's as if you killed our family in cold blood in our yard and you want a cookie for it. Take a deep breath. Your supposed revolution has destroyed the livelihoods of thousands of good people that fed you. As I said today after awakening from a moment of total clarity, I posted on Twitter that I will never forgive the millennials that filtered their mommy and daddy issues through a prism of hatred for my country. I will fight the rest of my life to strengthen a defense against their psychosis for future American generations. Asshole lives don't matter. So here are a few nuggets filled with the awful, triggering, unavoidable truth. Maybe you'll learn something. The party of blatant, arrogant hypocrisy invaded the airwaves of America in mid-August of 2020 with an awkward mediocrity most expected. So tonight we stand together united by the values we cherish, decency, Respect, justice. Member of Congress said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill, as you remember. I know that. This unprecedented moment calls for leadership, steady, inclusive leadership, driven by people who understand that our democracy is based on the value of each and every one of us being treated with dignity and respect. There are a small percentage of the American people, virulent people, some of them the dregs of society. To find out everything you need to know about mail-in ballots, your polling place, or even just am I registered, text VOTE to 30330. 30330. That would be the president's golf score if he didn't cheat. A absentee balloting, voting by mail, is done outside of the supervision of election officials. So that means they can't monitor it, they can't prevent intimidation and pressure on voters, and there's almost no check on the system. And a great illustration of this is the fact that years ago, a assistant professor actually at, I think, Portland State University in Oregon yep. uh, did a survey of just one county, Washington County, and in her survey, 5% of the people admitted that someone else had filled out their ballot. And 2.5% admitted that somebody else signed their ballot. Now, she said it was probably a lot higher than that because most people don't want to admit that they're, par they're, they're <laughs> a party to a crime. But look, take that 5% that just in one county in Oregon people admitted 
yeah, somebody else filled out my ballot. Well, you uh, expand that to the entire state, and literally that means tens of thousands. The telethon-esque DNC highlights what the moderate blue dog Democrats once were. If you give us a chance, we can perform. After all, Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did. She just did it backwards and in high heels. While shamelessly presenting the radicals they have become, spewing hypocrisy from an event that should be called the Globalist Marxist Anti Nationalism Convention. We have a president who is not only incapable of addressing these crises, but is leading us down the path of authoritarianism. What's our strategy? Over the past four years, a lot of people have asked me when others are going so low. Does going high still really work? My answer, going high is the only thing that works. I welcome everyone to this confirmation hearing on the nomination of Mr. Judge Chairman. Brett Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman. To serve as Associate Justice. Mr. Chairman, I'd like Supreme to be recognized Court, for United a question States. before we proceed. Regular order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be recognized to ask a question before we proceed. The committee received just last night, less than 15 hours ago, 42,000 pages of documents that we have not had an opportunity to review or read or analyze. You are out, you're out of order. I'll proceed. We cannot possibly move forward, Mr. Chairman. I extend this a very warm welcome to Judge Kavanaugh. We have not been Judge given Kavanaugh an opportunity to have a meaningful his wife, hearing Ashley. on this nominee. As president... Joe Biden would never let tyrants manipulate him like a puppet. He would never pervert our military to stroke his own ego. He would never turn his back on our troops. We will send an additional 475 service members to Iraq. People forget that he gave a similar speech in March and sent about 20,000 more troops back then to Afghanistan. And so this is the second round. And uh, I think there are, there are jittery people in Congress, especially Democrats, and I think Americans are looking at this. Uh, it's becoming more of an unpopular war. So I think he has to explain to the American public tonight um, how this is going to end at some point. I'm here today is to personally thank you and every service member throughout this region for the near elimination of the ISIS territorial caliphate in Iraq and in Syria. Two years ago, when I became president, they were a very dominant group. They were very dominant. Today, they're not so dominant anymore. America shouldn't be doing the fighting for every nation on Earth not being reimbursed in many cases, at all. If they want us to do the fighting, they also have to pay a price. And sometimes that's also a monetary price. So we're not the suckers of the world. While the main speakers ruthlessly lie to the American voter, selling a slanderous overview of the current administration that actually describes themselves. Vote for honest elections. So we, not a foreign adversary, choose our president. It was here that just weeks ago, Americans donned face masks and safely and peacefully protested the death of George Floyd. But while we were peacefully protesting, Donald Trump was plotting. Uh, well, we've commissioned uh, the, the artwork. We re renamed the plaza, and I'm thankful to the council for uh, codifying uh, that renaming to Black, Black Lives Matter Plaza. Uh, we think it's going to uh, have a central place, not in just D.C. history, but in American history. The criticism is helpful. Um, I also think that it might... Um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we saw the failure of a government that tried to deny the virus, then tried to ignore it, and then tried to politicize it. The failed federal government that watched New York get ambushed by their negligence and then watched New York suffer but all through it learned absolutely nothing. 
homes are now considered to be ground zero in this battle against this pandemic. And now these facilities across the state of New York will be under the state's microscope. A nursing aide at one nursing home, the villages of Orleans and Albion, contacted 7 Eyewitness News saying no staff in that facility has the proper PPE. Please help before the nursing home gets wiped out. The aide said she quit her job just days ago after she said officials tried to get her to move from a COVID unit to a non-COVID unit. She said she was, quote, not going to continue to put that nursing home at risk with no proper PPE and the constant cross-contamination. Auto workers in this union and across our state could have lost their jobs if not for Barack Obama and Joe Biden. In, 20, in 2009, the Obama-Biden administration inherited the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The auto industry on the brink of collapse. A million jobs at stake. But President Obama and Vice President Biden didn't waste time blaming anyone else or shirking their responsibility. They got to work. Well, I wrote Obama a letter and I said, Dear President Obama, God bless you. But you did not save Detroit. You saved General Motors. You saved Chrysler. Detroit, at this point, would stand a better chance if they were an Iraqi or Syrian city in terms of getting some sort of help. When the history is written of this era, this is how you'll be remembered. He was the first black president. Okay, not a bad accomplishment, but that's it. That's it, Mr. Obama. No public official, including the president, should use their office to enrich themselves or their supporters. Uh, but you set up your adult kids. And in the case of the Bidens, Joe Biden was punt point person for the Obama administration towards two countries, China and Ukraine. And lo and behold, the two countries that Hunter Biden ends up doing the most business in overseas are China and Ukraine. And the amounts of money are astronomical. And the deals that he got have absolutely nothing to do with his background. He had no expertise to sell. Uh, he had no skill set to sell to either the Chinese or Ukrainians. He was being paid for something, Tucker. Uh, it certainly wasn't his skill set. I think we know what he was being paid for. Displaying a hubris so brazen that Sally Yates, a conspirator of the Russia collusion hoax, and serial rapist Bill Clinton were given prime spots even as new evidence of his criminal behavior became available. At a time like this, the Oval Office should be a command center. Instead, it's a storm center. There's only chaos. Just one thing never changes. His determination to deny responsibility and shift the blame. Meanwhile, outside of the ghost town DNC convention, Biden zombies attacked a Trump-supporting kid and his mom. Tulsi Gabbard, the only Democrat that reached over party lines to the rest of the American voters, earned delegates, and earned a voice at the DNC, was of course completely snubbed by the party of hate inhabiting the country club inside. Biden will now have to leave the comfort of his basement and move forward from his interviews with the vile, demonic pornography pusher Cardi B to face a hungry mockingbird media and a pummeling from the Commander-in-Chief on September 29th in Cleveland, October 15th in Miami, and October 22nd in Nashville, Tennessee. Is that the American you want for you, your family, your children? John Bound reporting. <laughs> Roughly three months ago, Refuse Fascism called on fellow anarchists impersonating protesters to meet outside of Washington, D.C.'s Lafayette Park. They were outraged that President Trump would show defiance against the siege of the White House at the end of May that resulted in more than 60 U.S. Secret Service Uniform Division officers and the torching of the historic St. John's Episcopal Church. Refuse Fascism had come to celebrate that they have gradually become an agitating tentacle of the Democratic Party. Think about what it's going to cost to conduct Occupy-type protests all across the country, and especially in Washington, D.C., and let the people who are anguishing right now about a Trump-Pence administration, let all those who are seething with anger and rage, who are starting to organize and think about life under a fascist regime, know that they are not alone and that there actually is a plan and a way to stop this. Regardless of the fact that they were in part formed by the Revolutionary Communist Party, 
And let me say one thing to the white people in the audience. Now, you know, Bobby has been saying for a long time, we will not fight racism with racism. We refuse to stoop to the level of a racist to hate somebody because of the color of his skin. Well, that's fine. That's a cop-out. And if you act like that, the Black Panther Party will hate you. Not because you're white, but because you ain't taking care of business to organize other people. Teach them the need to support the black liberation movement led by the Black Panther Party as a strong, fearless voice against American imperialism. In the studio, we have some good Americans. Carl Diggs, co-initiator of Refuse Fascism representative of the Revolutionary Communist Party. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Rashad. Because when I heard Black Voices for Trump, <laughs> right, yeah. it reminded me of something. This is like having Jews for Adolf Hitler back in Nazi Germany. Damn! And we have known since 2017 that they are indirectly funded by the Alliance for Global Justice, which is listed as an organizer and fiscal sponsor for Refuse Fascism, which is in turn funded by George Soros through the Tides Foundation. As the Daily Caller reported, the benefactors of the Alliance for Global Justice and Refuse Fascism are listed online, according to its most recent 990 tax form. Alliance for Global Justice received $2.2 million in funding for the fiscal year ending in March 2016. One of the group's biggest donors is the Tides Foundation, a nonprofit funded by billionaire progressive philanthropist George Soros. Tides gave the Alliance for Global Justice $50,000. Refused Fascism will be spearheading the left's self-described siege of the White House on September 5th with a nationwide protest claiming just as the German people could not have stopped their genocidal fascist program without driving out Hitler and the Nazi regime. We must act with all our resolve to drive this regime, a 21st century fascist regime led by a demented bully with his finger on the nuclear trigger out of power. Trump and Pence are operating out of Hitler's playbook, only they have nuclear weapons. Following Refuse Fascism's initial pressure on Pennsylvania Avenue in the beginning of September will be the proposed September 17th 50-day occupation of the White House. Coordinated by Adbusters, the same people that organized Occupy Wall Street nine years ago, at the time of Occupy Wall Street, Adbusters co-founder, 78-year-old Callie Lassen said, George Soros' ideas are quite good, many of them. I wish he would give Adbusters some money. We sorely need it, he said. He's never given us a penny. But according to discoverthenetworks.org, between 2001 and 2011, Adbusters Media Foundation received $309,773 from the Tides Foundation. Let us once again summon the sweet revolutionary nonviolence that was our calling card in Zuccotti Park. In the current atmosphere of violent destruction where homicide rates are skyrocketing, does anybody really think that is a possibility. While the facade of protests cover for a growing wave of organized crime, as even far-left failure Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot just impotently pointed out, telling Time Magazine, when people showed up on Michigan Avenue in the downtown area with U-Haul trucks and cargo vans and sophisticated equipment used to cut metal and the methods that were used and how quickly it got spun up, that wasn't any spontaneous reaction. The core of what happened, that's organized criminal activity. It was a planned attack. Adbusters also learned from Occupy Wall Street that funding a sustained occupation requires more than donations from the public. Yes, I am outraged. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Will we see Hollywood celebrities mindlessly step up to support communist insurgency as they did for the murderers and rapists they bailed out of jail recently with the Minnesota Freedom Fund? And speaking of Minnesota Freedom Fund supporters, vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, who was immediately endorsed by Alexander Soros, is poised to ride the wave of siege anarchism disguised as anti-racism and anti-police brutality. This siege will emerge as a sustained attack on a segment of the American people. It is glaringly apparent that many who support the president administration are either racist, steeped in racist religious beliefs, ignorant, or as my mother used to say, just plain dumb. This time, they, not you, have an ally in the White House. This time, they have an ally. They're a small percentage of the American people, virulent people. 
some of them the dregs of society. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. The siege expanding an already perilous tone for the future of a morally decaying republic. John Bound reporting. <laughs> After years of relentless, shameful anti-executive office takedown tactics, Brian Stelter actually had this exchange on his Fantasyland weekend show. Uh, Aaron, your view of this, you know, when you see um, entire media companies essentially exist to tear down Joe Biden, is there an equivalent to that on the left tearing down Trump? There, there really isn't. And, you know, what I would say, it, it, it's, a, it's really a diet of, of this type of information that a lot of these voters are getting. A lot of the voters that I talk to, I can, uh, you know, when I interview them, I do hear uh, them saying a lot of the talking points that sound very familiar from, from some of these shows, which I try to listen to. You know, you can you can hear these uh, these comments being echoed uh, by, by voters. And you know that this is the diet that they're on, uh, cons you know, AM radio, uh, you know, conservative talk. This is the big number on the main question. Should the Senate vote to convict and remove President Trump from office. A slim majority of Americans in this poll, Brianna, 51% say yes, 45% say no. Just think about how far we have slid down the slippery slope of the mountain in just a handful of years. This president is impeached for life. There's nothing the Senate can do that can ever erase that. On the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also saying that the president... I don't know why you'd that say that. It's such a racist question. There are some people that say that no. now the Republican Party is seen as supporting white nationalists oh, because of your rhetoric. That. I don't what believe What do you that. make of that? I don't believe it. Just, well, I don't know. Why do I have my highest poll numbers ever with African Americans? Do you think Donald Trump is racist? I do. Why doesn't President Trump condemn racism? His own words and actions tell you why. He's a racist. Stelter exists in a parallel news universe of his own making, where he is America's redeemer, and his disciples are sent out among us to rid the world of truths they don't understand. Look at this right here. The guy that goes around policing and calling for censorship and then claims that Trump's wrong, there's no censorship of conservatives or patriots. You are incredibly shameful. Man. How are you doing, Alex? You're just a... Look at you. Look, look, look. You are literally an anti-American, anti-free speech coward. You're going to go down the history books at the Criminal News Network. Only someone like a Brian Stelter, who was obviously born yesterday, wouldn't have noticed that the 92% of media coverage that is negative against President Trump began even before President Trump set foot in the Oval Office, and a portion of it by Stelter himself. Number one, just how low will the deception go? How deep will the deceit go? Trump's defense is predicated on cheap slogans like coup and hoax. He's constantly contradicting himself, saying those slogans over and over again. You know, one minute he says, read the transcript of his call. The next minute he says that Adam Schiff is going to doctor the deposition transcripts. Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. Shorn of its rambling character and in not so many words, this is the essence of what the president communicates We've been very good to your country, very good. No other country has done as much as we have. But you know what? I don't see much reciprocity here. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. 
And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent, understand lots of it. On this and on that, I'm going to put you in touch with people, not just any people. I'm going to put you in touch with Attorney General of the United States, my Attorney General, Bill Barr. CNN is a cultural information disease, a full-blown propaganda arm shelling out conspiracies of the socialist left for their globalist paychecks. Anyone held in its sway should see a mental health care provider. John Bound reporting. And now we're seeing their foot soldiers, which the Chinese used, Mao used, to really instill fear and make make everyone know in China that not a single person was above the law to attack institutions you thought were untouchable, whether it was the founders. And then it got to the saints. It starts off with tearing down Catholic saint statues and desecrating churches. But before you know it, places like the Washington Post are attacking my neighborhood priest, Monsignor Pope. Uh, and, And we're talking in L.A. with Garcetti. They're going to turn off the power. They're saying they're going to go after go, go after parties. They're going to go after churches and places that refuse to shut down. Places like Harvest Rock that are suing the state of California and saying that they have a right to gather, a First Amendment right to gather, just like the protesters do. It's a double standard completely. It's a new system. Portland's army of black bloc morons has continued its war on its enemy in the nation's elderly. One woman stood in front of the mob and ordered them to stop trying to destroy the southeast Portland precinct. After being smothered in paint, she continued to stand her ground. while another woman with a walker eventually extinguished a fire started by the mob in a trash can. The group, organized by the Youth Liberation Front, reportedly came equipped with ties made out of rebar meant to pop police vehicle tires. Several of the ties were thrown into the street, and police vehicles ran them over, causing damage to tires, according to Portland police. Black Lives Matter! We're going to burn their building down! And as Antifa cells move into neighborhoods and target the elderly, as they did Andy Noe's elderly parents and a woman they dubbed the Nazi lady, it is slowly dawning on at least some of these Soros tools that what awaits them after being bailed out by seditious lawyers isn't a communist utopia. Instead, it's at least a five-year prison sentence or a severe beating by the locals. These little motherfucking white boys didn't know where he was going and broke my f-ing window in my truck. This wasn't no resi- this is a residential area. This wasn't no stores over here. Oh, it's going bad. The Antifa guys are being chased like crazy. Told you, Yukaipa ain't the place to be. Those are Antifa guys running. Antifa guys are, they're getting Rico Agard Berry, who was released without bail after hurling an explosive device at the federal courthouse in Portland, was identified by his own President Trump supporting grandma. Berry Hill is charged with felony arson and faces a minimum of five years in prison if convicted. 18 year old Isaiah Maza faces 30 years in prison. Maza was seen lighting a fuse on a cylindrical object and throwing it inside the courthouse through the broken window, authorities say. The object exploded near federal agents exiting the building and injured both legs of a deputy U.S. Marshal. At least 250 black bloc communist loving idiots have been arrested nationwide. Some will spend a decade in prison, while others will be free to come back for more stupidity. John Bound reporting. Thanks for joining me on John Bound Politics. Check us out on Twitter at John Bound Politics, our home base at dailynewscollective.com. Newsbound on Twitter, John Bound Reports on YouTube, The Bound Report on band.video, and a big thanks to the hcuniversalnetwork.com for being the badass pioneering Americans that you are. And remember, as a true American at this point, if you aren't angry, you're doing it wrong. Asshole lives don't matter.
good night, America, wherever you